Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink with a bit more spooky of Halloween cards. I have been meaning to do this since the beginning of the my Halloween series, but I was super inspired by Tim Holt's live video earlier today. I was like, I need, I need to do this. <laughs> I need to sit down and play. So I'm going to do some spooky skies again. I've done videos like this previously in previous Halloween releases. This whole technique was inspired by uh, Stacy Hutchison. She designs cards and projects for Tim Holtz. And she did this uh, a few years ago now and blew me away. It was just like, this is the most brilliant technique ever. So I've done videos already, but basically you need a circle mask. I am using one of the moon mask stencils that Tim released. Uh, I think this came out last year. Um, I've used other products in previous videos. So I have my little moon mask and I use like just a, the teensiest bit of uh, dot runner just to hold it in place. And I'm working on some mixed media heavy stock and then I'm spraying it and I'm trying really hard not to spray too heavily. Because, you know, it looks right now, it looks it's patchy and splotchy. It ain't going to matter because the magic is when you start adding the water. So the sprays I used was black soot, ripe persimmon. And then I used, of course, some of the new Halloween mica stains because they're beautiful. They're so beautiful. I used burning ember and wicked elixir and decayed. So I'm getting this like rusty, moody very harvesty fall vibe color come going, which isn't the norm for me, especially with my most recent like Halloween card videos. I'm very like cutesy, pink, purple, pastel. <laughs> but this was a mood. This is a vibe. I was having fun. So I, the whole point is you spray it with the sprays, you remove the mask, and then you start spraying it with the water. And all these products, of course, being water reactive, they start pulling in over the the mast area aka where the moon's going to be and it gives us that moody ethereal look i'm going to do this a second time by the way so you know you can just keep watching so i did that and i'm using my heat tool at the same time to dry things you know you just honestly you just play with it it is amazing how even though i'm going to do this twice they look completely different I'm going to use the exact same colors, everything. I also added some old paper distress oxide spray. And yeah, so here I am doing it a second time. I just placed the same mask right over this distressed mixed media heavy stock. And then black soot distress uh, spray stain, ripe persimmon spray stain, and then the fabulous mica stains. So again, the decayed, a little bit of wicked elixir and burning ember. And these, of course, will give it the shimmer and sparkle, which I will show at the end of the video. But yeah, the biggest thing to take away from this is when like playing around with this technique, light a light hand, <laughs> which is hard. It really is. But it makes a difference because really, like you can see the minute I start spraying water on this, like the colors just start to solidify. They, co they cover up any areas missed, you know, with the sprays. They start moving the way they're supposed to. And it's, again, it's just fun. So I also added, you know, some water splatter. I'm just using my little Ranger Distress Sprayer. And you only press it halfway and you get more splatter than a mist. So adding splatter, adding that bit of old paper um, Distress Oxide Spray, just to give it that, you know, kind of moody look. And then the splatter I do at the end here, it's uh, the Harvest Moon Distress Mica Stain. So that pretty yellow, just kind of stars, sort of. But shake it up really well. And then I just take the nozzle right out of the bottle and just tap it and get my little bit of splatter. Everything was already dry, so this just layers on top. And then, because um, like I said, I can't, I can't, honestly can't even remember if I used this last year or not. <laughs> but... The whole thing with these moon masks is you have the mask, but then you also have the stencil and there's three sizes in the set. Yeah, three sizes of moons. So I use the coordinating stencil to add the actual like pattern detail, you know, of the moon. And I'm using pumice stone distress oxide ink and just a blending brush. I did like go over 
the stencil a bit, like go past the lines. I ain't worried about it. When I add everything else to this, because I'm going to add more splatter and the bats and all the fun things, it just, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so for my bats, I'm using the layered bats stencil from Simon. I, I love this set. It's a there's two in this set. This is the the stencil with slightly smaller bats. The other one has quite large ones. So this works perfect for my little mini slimline card. And then I have some white matte opaque texture paste. And I'm just putting it on a palette and I am tinting it black with black soot distress paint. Anything you're using to tint your paste. Um, Tim Holtz does recommend using just the paints. Um, because like inks and different things can seep out as the paste is drying and like start wrecking your cards. I've never had a problem. However, I'm just, it, it can happen depending, you know, on all the things. But whatever it is you're adding to your paste, go a little bit at a time. Especially when you're adding like a liquid, like black soot distress paint is very liquidy. So it is going to change the, the the consistency of your paste. So I just kept adding a drop at a time till I got it, you know, nice and deep and black. And then I positioned the stencil the way I wanted it because, you know, I wanted the bats kind of flying around the moon. And then I just apply that black uh, paste over the stencil with my little palette knife. You could leave it here. This looks fine, but again, go big or go home, man, you know? So <laughs> I was having fun. I, you should have seen the mess I made. I'm going to add glitter, dry glitter. I know. This is the Nightfall Glitter. This came out last year with the Ranger Halloween release with Tim Holtz. This is still available as of me doing this voiceover. So I poured the glitter over those stencil bats so they'll kind of cling to the paste. It does make a mess no matter what you do. Um, glitter is the herpes of the crafting world. And the newest one, the newest one I heard recently, I don't know where I heard this, but it was recent and it made me laugh so hard and it's perfect for Halloween videos, is... Dry glitter is Satan's dandruff. <laughs> I've been giggling over that all day, so I had to share it. Anyway, pour the glitter over the bats. So it will cling to that paste as it dries. And I will deal with the excess, but you got to let it dry first. And I'm working over a coffee filter. This does help keep things a lot more contained. So tapping the excess, put that lid on it. You do not want to knock that container over. That would be awful. So I let these dry and then I use my big tonic uh, surface sweep brush. Once this is dry, again, working over that same coffee filter or your trash can, that works as well too. If I'm not, you know, on camera, I just work over the trash can. But I brush off all that excess that's like clinging to the ink and just, you know, clinging to things with that fan brush and I, I brush it good, you know, try to remove as much as possible so it's not falling all over the place and... Yeah, now I've got these textured and glittery black bats flying around these cards, which, again, chef's kiss. Like, I don't know. This is, again, this isn't the color combo, you know, I'd normally go for, but I love it. And it was fun. And it's, oh, wait till you see the sparkle at the end. So anyway, <laughs> I took the black soot distress paint again, put these back in my splat box, and just took my little, my little fan brush and splattered this totally not necessary but hello halloween and adding black splatter to everything plus i did have a couple random little like smears here and there from the black texture paste so this just helps conceal that you know so there's a method to the madness so i did that set those aside to dry and then i grabbed a scrap of black cardstock and this is an oldie but goodie i've used this in so many halloween videos i can't even remember what year this came out it is still available this is the hand lettered halloween stamp set and i stamped the the fright night stamp from it onto the black cardstock that i used my anti-static powder tool on and then i stamped the sentiment with clear embossing ink and then i used copper embossing powder and melted that with my heat tool once I have that melted, I can funnel this embossing powder back into the container. I only have my my most used powders in my big like Systema containers that you guys see in my videos, like my white embossing powder, my clear, my gold embossing powder, etc. All of my not used as often that I only have like this, you know, individual container of, I keep as is, and then I just use coffee filters because that's perfect and coffee filters are biodegradable, etc. You know? So I funneled the 
boss powder back in the container. Same thing. Put the lid on it because I get my elbows and everything and knock everything over. I wiped off the excess anti-static powder. I taped the coordinating wafer dye into place and then die cut those sentiments. And then for little companion sentiments, again, oldie but goodie. This is like the original, like one of the first sentiment strip packs that Simon released because now there's like a million of them. Um, these are just the Halloween sentiment strips. And I've got, I must have ordered like extras because I have a lot of these. So I just picked out a few from my, my stash that went with that sentiment. So I have um, a little sentiment that says it's all Hallow's Eve. And then I trimmed down one that had said, I think like happy Halloween or whatever. But I just trimmed the, the, the word happy. That's that little, little tiny one right there. And I'm using a uh, rusty hinge distress ink and my blending tool and just covering those sentiment strips with that. And then I decided to use that on the inside of the card as well. So my card bases are Nina Desert Storm cardstock and they are six and a quarter inch. Yeah, six and a quarter inch by three and a quarter inch uh, mini slimline size. And I'm using that same layered bat stencil and the rusty hinge ink and just blending that over the stencil. And I'm going to blend that into the inside of both of these card bases. Once that's blended, I'm going to take the Happy Halloween sentiment from that hand-lettered Halloween um, stamp set. And I'm going to stamp that with Versafine Claire Nocturne ink onto the inside of this card. And again, there's something about like the Desert Storm shade of cardstock and the rusty hinge and the black sentiment. I was like... I was really in just the Halloween mood when I was making these. <laughs> so once the card bases, the insides of the cards were done, I adhered those sentiments on the front of the cards with little uh, foam squares that I just trimmed down. So I just popped those into place with foam squares. So it says, happy Fright Night. It's all Hallow's Eve. So got those adhered. And then the backs of these card fronts, I coated with Simon's Big Mama foam tape. So that'll give it that little bit of extra dimension that I love. So once I get those adhered into place, shocker, I know I didn't add any other bling. Didn't need to. I, this is one of the few times, you know, I didn't need to. There's just, there's so much going on with the glitter and the splatter and the shimmer of the background. These mica stains are so fun. So I just paired these cards with some black mini slimline envelope envelopes and that was it. So I've turned the flashlight on my phone to try and pick up. You can definitely see the glitter on these bats. But yeah, that shimmer and glitter in the background from those mica stains. It's chef's kiss. So much fun. Really love this burning ember color. I wasn't sure how I was going to use it. And now that I've used it, I'm like, ooh, love, love. So as always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post in the blog post will be pitch links um in the blog post i'll link to the original the original post by stacy i i should be able to find it so all that info will be in the blog post everything will be linked in the description box below to check out if you're interested thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting and i'll see you all very soon in the next one bye <laughs>